Thank you. Today, we're going to be uh, taking the portion Kodeshim, and we're going to examine uh, actually the idea of, of practical guide to holiness that um, helps to sort of help us understand what does it mean to be holy as, as Hashem is holy. He calls that in Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 1 and 2, it says, God spoke to Moses, telling him to speak to the entire Israelite community and say to them, you must be holy because I, God, your Lord, am holy. This is an interesting situation here because they uh, Moses is, is told to address the entire assembly all at one time before or any other time. He would tell his elders, the elders would speak to the people, vice versa. So they'd speak to groups, the men, uh, leaders of Israel. But rarely was it the whole, the whole kit and caboodle of the land of Israel, the people of Israel. I'm sorry. Um, the idea of holiness, what, what really sparks something deep within us is we feel the challenge of it when we hear the words. But often we are unable to describe exactly what it is. Now, there is a there's a basic level of understanding that we get from Torah wisdom is, you know, the study of Torah and doing mitzvahs, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea that one can be as holy as Hashem seems to be such a high watermark that. Uh, it seems unattainable, and yet Hashem himself requests that of his people. And I, I would eventually say request that as a dri driving factor for every being created on this earth is to strive to the highest level of excellence and holiness as they can. And, and we'll get into before the closing, you know, the basic elements of what is holiness from a, a Jewish perspective? Uh, but first, I would like to examine a couple of things here. Um, it said that it seems that God wants to give this section, this parsha, special treatment and the status because it contains the essence of Torah in itself. And in many ways, uh, this portion is like the Ten Commandments. And I'm sure Rabbi Avner is going to have a field day on, on this whole idea. Uh, the Ten Commandments, which are said to be in the presence of all of Israel because of all the other commandments that are related to them. So just as we have said that the, the root of the Shavah Mitzvot are found with all within the, the 613 commandments, you would also say that the, the root of the Ten Commandments are all... Uh, connected and interconnected to the other commandments that are within the, within the portion. And some would say, but this is given special status because it includes all the 10 commandments and uh, the Torah anthology list, the 10 commandments that are found within this text itself. And we'll briefly go through these uh, parallel in the 10 commandments the, the first, obviously, is I am God, your Lord, Exodus 20, verse 2. The Torah says here, I am God, your Lord. That is found in 19, verse 2. Paralleling the second commandment, you shall not have any other gods before you, which is found in Exodus 20, verse 3. The Torah here says, you shall not make any cast metal gods for yourself, verse 4 of chapter 19. We go on parallel in the third commandment, do not take God's name in vain. Exodus 20, verse 7, the Torah says here, do not swear falsely by my name, by my name. Parallel in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath, Exodus 20, verse 8, the Torah says, keep my Sabbath in the third verse. Parallel in the fifth commandment, God, uh, honor your father and mother which obviously is Exodus 12, and the Torah here says, every man shall respect his mother and father. Paralleling the sixth commandment, do not commit murder, Exodus 20, 13. The Torah says here, do not stand idly by the blood of your neighbor. <clears throat> Next, 
the seventh commandment, do not commit adultery. Uh, Exodus 20, 13, the Torah says here, the adulterer and adulteress must be put to death. Parallel in the 18th, uh, the eighth commandment, do not steal. Exodus 20, 13, the Torah says here also, do not steal. Uh, verse 11. Parallel in the ninth commandment, do not testify a sol- uh, false witness against your neighbor. The Torah says here, do not go as a talebearer amongst people. Verse 16 of chapter 19. Paralleling the 10th commandment, do not be envious. Uh, Exodus 20, 14, the Torah says here, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. When God gave the 10 commandments, he spoke to the Israelites in the second person. There was room for error. They could have assumed that the commandments were only given to Moshe. This is one reason that the Israelites erred in making the golden calf. God therefore repeated the Ten Commandments in their in the second person plural. So the idea is that this needed to be conveyed. So the question would be, I guess philosophically, theologically, whatever you want to call it, if one manages to to follow all of these commandments, these ten laws to the T. Uh, is it possible that one who follows these laws to the T are guaranteed to be holy as Hashem is holy? It's a big question. Now, some some would uh, say that, well, no, holiness obviously is is greater than that. It's a consciousness. It is uh, it's a level of demeanor and behavior that is not necessarily prescribed within these commandments, and I would I would agree. Uh, some would say, well, it's emphasized. It would be more emphasized or more strictly understood in the context of sexual purity, because that's one of the big discussions within the Talmud is this idea of of sexual purity to remain at the highest level of your uh, purity as far as the way you conduct your life. And of course, this is not going to be a religious sex education class, but for sure, uh, we should understand that it delves into many different areas, right? Uh, But as we've been students of Torah for so many years, we understand that holiness comprises every fiber of your being. It's your speech, it's your mindset, it's your thought process, it's your eyes, where your eyes go. It's what your ears consume. It's not just the mitzvahs and the, the, the uh, Torah study itself. Those are obviously very important, but holiness extends beyond all of that. And one of the uh, greatest premises of holiness that I become keenly aware of in the early years of study in Torah was holiness in its most rudimentary understanding is separation. It's a separation. What is the separation from? That separation is from things that are evil and negative, things that are not pure things that are not kind, things that are opposite of darkness, which would be light. And I realize the whole world that we live in right now is a world that is a battle between that which is holy and that which is evil. And it's pretty clear. It almost seems, you know, I've heard for years since I was a young man that one day before the end of days, uh, God will separate the men and the mice. We've heard that phrase, right? The, the good and the bad. And you think, how in the world is that going to happen? It's so convoluted and it's so mixed in. There are good people with the bad people and there are bad people with the good people. And how is he going to do this? And then you look around you, and you realize he's done a really good job by exposing and giving power to those who are Russia, weak, weak, wicked. He's given them power. They're exposing themselves on every angle. And it's very clear what side is the right side. Uh, Only an inept, immoral individual cannot, uh, is not able to look at a situation and tell what is negative or, uh, or what is positive about a situation. 
It seems to be really clear, but we are living in a generation to where that is not so clear to a lot of people. And I, I don't, I don't know if it's the majority of people, but I would say a huge number of people in our Western society, if you put up uh, an image of something that the rest of us would find repulsive, and I, I'm just going to get into it at this point, because why not? Uh, the image of uh, this man that has been dressing as a woman for a year and is celebrated on a beer can. I, I don't understand it. I, I, honestly, I'm trying to have a postmodern mindset that says, I kind of get that, hooray, but I can't even kind of get that. I don't even understand how do you separate, how do you celebrate such an oddity when there are millions of amazing women in society that have proven themselves to be heroes in our eyes, heroes. And they've never been on one beer can. Not that that means it's a status anywhere, but for crying out loud, this idea that Dylan Mulhavy is celebrated because he has been playing a female for over a year and a half. I don't understand it. There are a lot of things in the world that we are experiencing this point that we recognize that is that is dark. It may not be, you know, things that we're not even talking about things that are obvious evil. We all know what is obviously evil. But the problem is, is that it seems that Hashem is exposing even those things that are on the fringe. Maybe it sort of sounds good and feels nice, but deep down inside, it represents the very base, coarse nature of humanity, which is bad and not good. Like when someone praises someone else for chaotic behavior, I find it interesting that the news can be replete with two sides of a commentary, both equally defending their particular view with such passion and strength, and one be completely for a darker side of thought process for humanity. I don't understand it, but yet we understand it still exists and will always exist. Why does it exist? Because the creator of the universe put within us two natures in battle with each other, Yetzir Harar and Yetzir Tov, and we will always be embattling these things. And the striving for holiness is something that you actually do. You work your way toward holiness. The question the other day came in our class with Rabbi Yaakov Wobi. <clears throat> Someone asked, well, do you believe that mankind is intrinsically good? That they are all, all men, all men are basically good. And that only circumstances creates a negative environment. And Rabbi Wobi's response is, well, the issue is, is they're not basically good because deep down inside we have a yetzer tov, a yetzer harar, a, a, an inclination toward doing things that are on the negative side. So I don't even know how that balances out. I do know that there are a lot more people that are kind and beautiful in this world than we give them credit. I've been following a couple of in, in young individuals, young men from the UK that have been touring America, and they've been talking about it, you know, with their classic British accent about Americans this and Americans that. And finally, people have invited them and they started off in North Carolina and they're in Florida and they're going to make their way across the South, to Mississippi, to California. And uh, one of them came online. It was a late night. They were in a tent in North Carolina and he had his phone and he says, I've just got to say this. America is an amazing country. Like, Everybody's been so kind to us from everything that we've seen in the media. You know, you would think Americans are shooting at each other in the street and, you know, murdering people and throw, burying them in the in the backyard. And we've met nothing but kind people who've given us food and drink and been so cordial. I love this country. Every American should appreciate their country. And it, it make me realize that there are a lot of very good people in the world. But is good good holy? 
is good holy? Well, obviously, goodness is holy, right? Being good, being pure, that's holiness. But the real crux of the matter is, is that holiness is one's ability to separate from the muck and the mire that exists within their physicality and their mentality and their spirituality. It's somehow being able to stay pure in thought and deed. I was meditating upon these things during, during the um, counting of the Omer. And one of the things that I go through during this time is uh, not only to ask myself if I've spoken to people with respect and kindness and did I ever treat anyone with disrespect <laughs> or a lack of kindness, but taking it as far as how many people have I really thought that way about? Bless you, Sandy, even though I didn't hear it. Uh, even though uh, I may have only thought these very negative things about someone, did I do that and analyze, try to analyze the thought process? And as far as I'm concerned, I think one of the things that I, I thought, well, maybe maybe I'm, I'm doing this for the wrong reason. I'm doing this because I really don't want people to do this to me. Right. I don't want people to even think negative thoughts about me. Then I realize this is not about me. This is a, this is not about what people think about me. It's about what I think about other people. And so it was this really interesting exercise to ask myself, do I criticize people mentally? Am I lacking the basic elements of holiness in my mind, in my thought process? You see, holiness is much finer, much more granular than we uh, sometimes give it credit for. It's not just simply going to synagogue or for Christians to go to church. It's not about simply picking up your Bible and reading 20 minutes in a day. It's deep. And we all have learned from the greatest minds in Torah that a person who studies Torah, but yet doesn't live to the elements of Torah, the wisdom of Torah, lacks Torah themselves. Or a person who maybe studies Torah, but their anger gets the best of them and it controls them, then that, that anger destroys their Torah. And we have uh, plenty of... Um, uh, antidotal ex examples of this around. So what does this call us to be is to be separate and being trying not to be like everybody else, but to be an individual that is separated to Hashem, uniquely positioned with you, Hashem. The other day I was doing some research on potential videos in the future, and one of them was how being a Ben or Bat Noach is the most fundamental of authentic relationship with the creator of the universe. It's the most fundamental. It's the most basic, the most pure. It's without a lot of rubbish. It's not, it's, it, it, it lacks um, framework of religiosity. It just comes with a simple prescription to be holy as God is holy. Those words should draw us like a moth to a flame. Like when we hear those words, we shouldn't be repulsed. But my friend, there are a lot of people in this world that are absolutely repulsed by anything pure, by anything holy, by anything good. We're living in a society today where they want to parade uh, transvestites and cross-dressers before elementary school children to do a dance, a promiscuous dance. What kind of world do we live in? Once again, be holy as God is holy. I can't control all the avenues of, of, of negativity in the world, in the community I live in. I can't control the negativity that's in the media. However, I can control my connection with the master of the universe. And one of the things that I would love to be able to convey in a separate video is this idea of pursuing Hashem 
in the level uh, at the level of Avraham Avinu, uh, not as an Ivrit, not as a, a convert to Judaism, but rather a convert to the godly ways that he has created us to to bring ourselves or to chuva ourselves to the intended purpose that we were supposed to be from the day that Adam was created. Holiness is first returning. It's studying our Torah. It's understanding the foundations of the knowledge and wisdom of God. Holiness is next, the the commandments that we attempt to observe. Even though we understand that observing commandments without proper midot and intent lacks of purity and separation. These commandments are outlining our behaviors and our actions, how we treat people, what we say to others, etc. Uh, this idea of participating in prayer that is not, and we're talking about the Noahide, the Jewish people pray uh, men three times a day, and they have a specific time of prayer that they do. A Noahide has no prescription of what time to specific pr- specifically to pray, but yet we have something that drives us to want to connect to the master of the universe all the time. It's not just the morning. It's not just the evening. It's, it's, it's uh, on the porch looking into the, to the, to the weather and seeing how beautiful it is and having a, a sit-down com- commune with, with the master of the universe. Participating in prayer is a very important part of our act of holiness, our separation. It separates you from the rest of the world. Next, uh, what separates us from a lot of people, but not everybody, our acts of kindness and charity. Uh, even though there are a lot of people that are, are deeply involved in charity in our world that are not particularly religious, it is important for us to maintain that basic element as well. Uh, the next thing that is important to uh, expressing holiness is to embrace this idea of tikkun olam, uh, this idea of repairing the world and making it a better place. Embrace, embracing this concept means uh, working towards uh, a proper, just society, a society that treats people with loving kindness and, and treats people with respect. The next is a strong sense of ethics and morality, something that drives us to do what we do in the private, in our private time. The true ethics and morality and holiness is not really defined what everybody else sees. It's what is done when no one is seeing. That is the true test of a holy person. And last but not least, I would say, is this whole idea of gratitude. Our holiness and separation is a person dim, uh, full of gratitude, not only for life and for others and for people around you, but gratitude to God for every day that we have a, a breath in our lungs, uh, a sense of uh, awe, newness and awe uh, that we should, God hope that we would never lose. I couldn't imagine growing old and becoming more embittered and emboldened in my bitterness. There are a lot of people that we have met like that. And I, I have like walked away and told my wife, oh my goodness, please, if you ever see me heading down the path of being a bitter old man, do something like knock some sense into me. I don't want to become that human being. I want to become the person that has cultivated that sense of gratitude about life. When you have gratitude, it's hard to be grumpy when you have gratitude. And if one is grumpy, then obviously you don't have gratitude because you're too busy thinking about what you don't have. And so to cultivate and express the gratitude is very important. So following these, these practices that we talked will help us connect to a shim in a better way, in a, in a, in a finer way, an acute way of holiness. But remember, holiness is basically this. What's dark, leave it to the darkness. What's light, 
make it brighter, make it brighter from our actions, make it brighter uh, for others to see and to know. And most of all, may our holiness and may the holiness of the people of God bring Mashiach in our age. Amen and amen. So that concludes this discussion. Who would like to start with the next part?